Every time you see a robot moving with precision on a factory floor, every time you watch a machine adjust itself automatically, every time you witness automation working without human hands, you're watching the legacy of a black man who history tried to erase. His name was Elijah McCoy, and he invented the foundation of modern robotics in 1872, decades before anyone even used the word robot. He created the first machine that could think for itself, the first device that could self-regulate and maintain its own operation without stopping. And when companies tried to copy his invention with cheap knockoffs, engineers would demand the real McCoy, a phrase that became part of our language while the man behind it disappeared from history books. So how did a black engineer born to escape slaves become the father of automation? How did his invention lead directly to the robots assembling cars, performing surgeries, and exploring Mars today? And why don't you know his name when you definitely know Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla? Elijah McCoy was born on May 2, 1844 in Colchester, Ontario, Canada. His parents, George and Mildred McCoy, were formerly enslaved people who had escaped from Kentucky through the Underground Railroad, that secret network of safe houses that helped thousands flee bondage. George McCoy had enlisted in the British Army and was rewarded with 160 acres of farmland in Colchester after his service. This was where Elijah was born, in a small farming community where black families who had escaped slavery tried to build new lives. But even in Canada, freedom didn't mean equality. Black families faced racism that made education and opportunities scarce. Yet, from a very young age, Elijah showed a gift that nobody could ignore. He understood how machines worked. He would take apart tools and equipment on the family farm, study the pieces, and put them back together better than before. His parents recognized this talent, and they made a decision that would change everything. When Elijah was just 15 years old, his parents scraped together their savings and sent him across the ocean to Edinburgh, Scotland to study mechanical engineering. Think about what that meant for a second. A formerly enslaved black family in the my day teen hundreds, sending their teenage son to study at one of the most advanced engineering schools in the world. This was an extraordinary sacrifice that most families of any color couldn't make. In Edinburgh, Elijah studied at the University of Edinburgh for five years, learning mechanical engineering, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, and the precision design of moving parts. He was trained in understanding how energy moves through systems, how to reduce friction, how to make machines more efficient. Very few black men anywhere in the world received this level of education in 1859. He returned to North America as a fully certified mechanical engineer with skills that should have opened doors to any railroad or factory in the industrializing world. But when Elijah came back, reality hit him hard. Despite his international credentials, despite his education at one of Europe's finest engineering schools, the United States in the 1860s wasn't ready to accept a black engineer. Racial discrimination barred him from practicing his profession. The only job he could get was as a fireman and oilman for the Michigan Central Railroad in Detroit, shoveling coal and manually oiling train engines. It was the worst kind of irony. A trained mechanical engineer forced to do manual labor because of the color of his skin. But it was in that position, standing beside the roaring furnaces of steam locomotives, that Elijah McCoy witnessed the problem that would change everything. Steam engines in the 1800s required constant lubrication to function. The pistons, gears, and moving parts generated enormous friction and heat. Without oil, the metal parts would grind against each other, overheat, and seize up completely. But here's the problem. There was no way to oil a running engine. Trains had to stop operations every few miles so workers could manually oil each moving part. Ships had to dock. Factory machines had to shut down. This process wasted enormous amounts of time and money. Elijah watched this inefficiency day after day and his engineering mind started working. What if there was a way to lubricate engines automatically while they were still running? What if machines could maintain themselves without human intervention? In 1872, after years of experimenting in a small workshop in his home, Elijah McCoy invented and patented the automatic lubricating cup, also called the oil drip cup. The device was brilliant in its simplicity but revolutionary in its implications. It used the steam pressure from the engine itself to automatically pump oil to the moving parts that needed it. A reservoir held the lubricant, and a series of tubes distributed it evenly across the machinery based on the engine's own movement and pressure. Think about what this meant. For the first time in history, a machine was regulating itself. The engine's motion triggered the release of oil, which maintained the system's function, which allowed the engine to keep moving, which triggered more oil release. 
It was a closed loop system, what engineers today call a feedback mechanism. The machine sensed its own state and adjusted its behavior automatically to maintain optimal operation. This was the birth of automation. This was the foundation of robotics. Elijah McCoy created the first industrial application of mechanical autonomy, and the impact was immediate. Trains could now run for hundreds of miles without stopping. Ships could cross oceans without interrupting their engines. Factories could maintain continuous production 24 hours a day. By 1899, the Michigan Bureau of Labor reported that McCoy's lubricator was being used on almost every railroad in North America. It spread to Europe, to steamships crossing the Atlantic, to factories across the industrializing world. But here's where racism enters the story again. Other companies started making cheap copies of McCoy's invention. These imitations didn't work as well. They would leak oil, distribute it unevenly, or break down under pressure. Railroad engineers and factory managers who had used the original McCoy lubricator knew the difference between quality and garbage. They started demanding the real McCoy when purchasing equipment, not some cheap knockoff. That phrase, the real McCoy, spread across industrial America and eventually became part of everyday language meaning the genuine article the authentic original, the best version of something. Yet, most people who use that phrase today have no idea it honors a black inventor who revolutionized industry. And here's what makes this even more frustrating. Elijah McCoy rarely got full credit or financial reward for his inventions. White-owned companies profited enormously from his lubricators. Many of his patents were registered under his employers' names. Others were outright stolen. The racial hierarchies of industrial America made it nearly impossible for a black inventor to control his own creations or build wealth from them. But Elijah didn't stop. Over his lifetime, he registered 57 patents, most of them related to automatic lubrication and machine control systems. In 1916, he invented a graphite lubricator that combined oil with graphite to reduce friction in high-temperature engines, a principle that would later be used in aerospace and automotive engineering. He also developed an ironing board, a lawn sprinkler, and a self-regulating engine governor. But his most important contribution wasn't any single device. It was the philosophy behind them, designing machines that could operate independently with minimal human input. This idea that machines could maintain themselves, adjust their own behavior, and function intelligently became the defining feature of automation and eventually robotics. To understand why Elijah McCoy's work matters to modern robotics, you need to understand what makes a robot different from a regular machine. A regular machine does exactly what you tell it to do, nothing more. Press a button, it performs an action. Stop pressing, it stops. But a robot is different. A robot senses its environment, processes that information, and adjusts its behavior based on what it detects. That's called a feedback loop. In 1948, a mathematician named Norbert Wiener published a book called Cybernetics that laid the theoretical foundation for robotics and artificial intelligence. Wiener described feedback control systems, mechanisms that use sensory information to regulate their own behavior. What he was describing mathematically, Elijah McCoy had already built mechanically 76 years earlier. McCoy's automatic lubricator was a feedback system. The movement of the engine triggered the release of oil. The oil maintained the system's function. The continued function sustained the movement. The machine sensed its own state through mechanical means and regulated itself accordingly. This is exactly how modern robots work, except they use electronic sensors instead of mechanical ones. When you see a robot arm in a Tesla factory adjusting its grip pressure based on what it's holding, that's a feedback loop. When you watch a self-driving car slow down because it detects an obstacle, that's a feedback loop. When a surgical robot corrects its position mid-operation based on real-time data, that's a feedback loop. The principle is exactly the same as McCoy's lubricator. The system senses, processes, and adjusts. By the early 1900s, McCoy's concepts had spread through every factory and workshop in the industrialized world. Henry Ford's assembly lines in Detroit, the very city where McCoy worked, were possible largely because machinery had become self-lubricating and capable of extended operation without human maintenance. The entire concept of mass production depended on machines that could run continuously without stopping. Later developments in robotics built directly on this foundation. In 1961, General Motors installed Unimate, the first industrial robot arm, in their New Jersey factory. That robot could lift heavy metal parts, move them precisely, and repeat the action thousands of times without tiring. It worked because it had sensors that gave it feedback about its position and movement. 
allowing it to adjust and correct itself automatically. That's Mikoi's principle applied with electronic components instead of mechanical ones. Today's robots in Amazon warehouses, surgical robots performing delicate operations, drones delivering packages, autonomous vehicles navigating streets, they all rely on the same foundational logic Elijah McCoy introduced. Feedback, self-regulation, and mechanical independence. Every robot that self-corrects or self-maintains owes a conceptual debt to that first automatic lubricator built by a black engineer in 1872. But Elijah McCoy's story is also a story of erasure. Despite his extraordinary achievements, his name never appeared in most engineering textbooks or histories of innovation. The systematic racism of the 19th and early 20th centuries relegated black inventors to the margins of history. Granville Woods, called the Black Edison, faced similar struggles despite his immense contributions to telecommunications and railway automation. Louis Latimer, who helped Alexander Graham Bell patent the telephone and worked on improving Thomas Edison's light bulbs, was barely mentioned in history books. Black innovators laid the groundwork for technologies that define the modern world but their legacies were buried under racial prejudice and historical neglect. Even today, most people who say, the real McCoy, have no idea they're honoring a black inventor who revolutionized industry and created the foundation for robotics. In his later years, Elijah's life took tragic turns. In 1920, he and his wife Mary were involved in a serious automobile accident. Mary died from her injuries, and Elijah suffered physical and emotional trauma that he never fully recovered from. His health declined steadily. In 1922, he founded the Elijah McCoy Manufacturing Company in Detroit to produce his lubricators directly, but the company struggled financially. On October 10, 1929, Elijah McCoy died at the Eloise Infirmary in Wayne County, Michigan, at the age of 85. He died in relative obscurity, having sold the rights to many of his patents and wound up poor in both money and health. But here's the beautiful irony. Even as his body failed, his inventions continued humming in factories and railways across the world. His self-sustaining machines kept running, exactly as he had designed them to, silent testaments to a mind that had imagined mechanical life before anyone called it robotics. It took decades for the world to start recognizing what Elijah McCoy had contributed. In 1975, Detroit established Elijah McCoy Day and placed a historical marker at his former home. In 2001, he was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. In 2012, the United States Patent and Trademark Office named its first regional office in Detroit the Elijah J. McCoy Midwest Regional Patent Office. Today, the International Council for Machinery Lubrication honors his legacy with the Elijah McCoy Award for Lubrication Champions. Google created a doodle celebrating his birthday in 2022. These recognitions are important, but they came far too late. The genius of Elijah McCoy challenges us to remember that innovation knows no color. The spark of creativity and intelligence that drives human progress belongs to all of humanity. When we erase black inventors from history, we're not just being unfair to those individuals, we're lying about how technology actually developed. We're teaching young people that only white men create and invent, when the truth is that people of every background have been pushing technology forward since the beginning of the industrial age. The next time you see a robot arm moving with precision on an assembly line, remember the black engineer who first imagined machines that could regulate themselves. The next time you hear someone say, the real McCoy, remember that phrase honors a man who was denied recognition because of his race. The next time you use any automated system, from your car's cruise control to your automatic coffee maker, Remember that the foundation of that technology was laid by a black man working beside the furnaces of steam locomotives in 1870s Detroit. Elijah McCoy didn't just make machines run smoother. He made them smarter. He gave them the ability to sense, adjust, and maintain themselves. He created the mechanical logic that would eventually evolve into the robots and AI systems that shape our world today. And though history tried to forget his name, every self-operating machine in existence carries his legacy forward. His story proves that black excellence has always existed, even when the world tried to hide it. It proves that the foundations of modern technology are not solely white or European. They are global, built by minds of every color and background working against impossible odds to push humanity forward. Elijah McCoy deserves to be remembered as one of the founding fathers of robotics and automation, right alongside any other name you learned in school. His invention of the automatic lubricator in 1872 was the moment machines learned to think for themselves, and everything that came after, from factory robots to artificial intelligence, stands on the foundation he built.
Subscribe if you want to hear more stories about inventors and innovators that history tried to erase.